Thank you for joining. William Steele, True Crime and Steele Spotlight Television. We have another person who has a horrendous situation in the California prison system. Rodney Barno received a draconian sentence for a very, very minor incident, and he's been incarcerated a very, very long time. I'm going to introduce Rodney and let him tell his own story in his own words. Rodney, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Tell us, tell us who you are and how the heck did you end up in prison? Keeping in mind, we have a very short time on this particular episode. I got you. Okay, uh, my name is Rodney Barno. I'm from San Diego County. Uh, I was convicted of uh, criminal threats, vandalism, and criminal harassment. Uh, I was charged by the San Diego District Attorney's Office, and I received a sentence of 50 years to life. And uh, the reason that I was... Uh, my sentence was increased to that point was because of the California's three strikes law. And they were using my juvenile adjudications from when I was 17 years old uh, to strike me out. I have served currently 20 years uh, on a nonviolent crime that ordinarily, ordinarily carries three years. And uh, I've been trying to uh, bring some attention to my case through the district attorney's office uh, because I was convicted of crimes uh, that I did not commit. And so I have been fighting for almost the whole 20 years to try to bring some light, you know, and I'm not completely alleging 100% innocence, but there are uh, numerous acts that I was convicted of that I did not commit, and I have documentation to prove the, uh, the innocence. And the district attorney's office was also in possession of these documents, and they are refusing to correct the injustices that happened in my case. Okay, so in your case, you uh, went to prison. I think you said you were 27 years old. How old are you now? I'm uh, 47 right now. Right now, 47 were they, were they, years old. Are, are your convictions classified as violent or nonviolent? Nonviolent. So for nonviolent offenses, this man has been in prison 20 years with a 50 some odd year sentence. And the laws have the laws have changed in California. He's going to tell us about that and what it means. They're supposed to be reviewing people under three strikes who are nonviolent and certain categories for immediate resentencing. Instead, they're deliberately sitting on your case. Tell us about the changes in the law that were designed to help exactly somebody in your situation, and the prosecutors refusing to budge. Okay, so first we had Proposition Fifty Seven that passed. When Proposition 57 passed, the state litigated it for years to prevent nonviolent three strikers from getting relief under Prop 57. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the courts ruled in our favor and said, hey, you know, you guys got to start considering these guys for, for release because they're, they're nonviolent offenders and they receive these enhancements for uh, purposes that they shouldn't have received them for. And so finally, when the court ordered CDCR to start taking us to board and releasing us, they come up with these crafty ideas of start issuing disciplinary reports and putting confidential information in our file in order to hinder our future parole prospects. And so another law came out. It's called 1170D uh, recall sentence. And assembly bills were passed allowing the CDCR and the district attorney's offices to have jurisdiction to recommend somebody for a recall if they received sentences that were disproportionate to their crimes. Mm -hmm. So CDCR has declined to re refer me for a recall of sentence under 1170. And I contacted the district attorney's office and they waited two years after filing my application to tell me without explanation that they're not resentencing me. Now, funds were allocated under, I think it was Assembly Bill 128. $5 million at a minimum was allocated to the district attorney's office to Summer Stefan to start looking at cases like mine to resentence people that have disproportionate crimes or received unjust sentences or received punishment that doesn't fit the crime. So after two years of reviewing my application, her office told me, nope, we're not, we're not going to help you without any explanation. What is the basis? I don't know. However, I do know that there has been some ongoing uh, uh, racial disparities in sentencing in San Diego County. There has been uh, discrimination going on in my case. Uh, the California Racial Justice Act just passed, and I'm trying to seek relief on February 13th, 2024. I filed a habeas petition in San Diego Superior Court Central Division, trying to get some type of relief under the California Racial Justice Act because the San Diego Police and District Attorney's Office uh, discriminated against me by referring to to me as a, a, a 
uh, a Middle Eastern guy. Every time they want to increase my bail, they refer to me as this Middle Eastern guy that has access to large sums of money from the Middle East. I, I don't I don't have that. I don't know where they got that from. And I have documentation to support all this. I was uh, so for, the, for the record, the for, for my audience, you were born in the United States, correct? Southfield, Michigan, yes. And so San Diego, I mean, that's a melting pot of many different cultures. And so they're making, I saw some of your legal documents. We'll, we'll have some of them in the description and on screen here, um, where they call sure. you very disparaging names. So you can prove that they were racially discriminating against you. I, now, I, now, I, now, for my audience, if you think this man for nonviolent offenses deserves 50 something years in prison, and he's already got 20 years in, if you think he deserves that, I want you to put that comment in the comment section. If you have can come up with a strategy, or if you know anybody else going through this, especially in California, we want you to leave a comment, contact us. My email address is on the screen. We want to know what's going on. We're trying to we're trying to name names and contact people and try to get people the help they deserve because I don't feel I got a draconian sentence for walking off of work detail many years ago. I got 15 years consecutive. <coughs> Same thing. They threatened me with all kinds of enhancements. <coughs> Excuse me in a different state. And so I know what you're going through. And I made it out, and you're gonna make it out too. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, the, the, the most disturbing thing for me is that, you know, the prosecution and an attorney witness involved in the case mm -hmm. uh, referred to me and my family as camel jockey thugs because my parents are from the Middle East, so the, uh, my national origin is Chaldean. And so I was referred to as committing terrorist type crimes by the court, by the judge. I was referred to as a uh, Middle Eastern, an Arab, a uh, camel jockey, and I've been discriminated against in my case, and I'm trying to seek some type of uh, relief on this. <clears throat> Tell me what they're doing with the $5 million they got to review cases. What do they do with the money? Well, the district attorney's office released a, a press memorandum type document that's about two, two pages uh, in April 2021. And District Attorney Summer Stefan specifically made it sound so nice on the internet to make the public think that these new laws passed, she's got funding, and she's gonna start helping people like me. And in order, in my opinion, in order to continue the pilot program for resentencing and receive the funding. But the problem we're having here is, is where where's the money being allocated if people like me are not being resentenced or, or, or properly evaluated. I just don't understand it. Has somebody audited what she's doing with this $5 million? Now, was it $5 million statewide or just for San Diego prosecutors? Uh, Assembly Bill 128 allocated funds to seven counties, San Diego being one of them. They received about $5 million minimum wow. for resentencing purposes. Wow. And I contacted, uh, I contacted Rand Corporation and I asked for the studies that they did regarding these pilot programs of resentencing. They sent me two books that get into detail. I have not read them yet, but it discusses the bills that passed, that uh, give them jurisdiction and allocated funds and how much and who's been resentenced, who hasn't. And so there's all the statistics you need are uh, in possession of Rand Corporation. So they're already analyzing all this. And of course, you're directly affected. So you're, you're analyzing it. Now, I believe you told me that you're a college grad and you, you're an accountant. How, you're, uh, tell me where you graduated from. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't graduate from college. I was an accountant for Fortune 500 companies in San Diego County. I did accounts receivables, accounts payables. I did their collections, uh, invoicing. So I did a various different types of tasks for different accounting departments and different corporations over you, my time. You have a very supportive family. I spoke to some of your family members. I know they're behind you. They, they're at their wit's end. I mean, 20 years for nonviolent crime. People heard from me every day when I had 15 years for nonviolent crime. And it's just disgusting yep. that they'll think it's okay to attack, to the tax rate. How much does it cost per year in California to incarcerate you? And I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last question. What does it cost in California per year to keep you incarcerated for nonviolent crime for 20 years so far? About about eighty thousand dollars minimum. I, I heard it went up, but I know it's for sure eighty thousand. And and you know the disturbing part about this is, is I went to board on January 12th. I went before a parole board. Believe it or not, I have no violence in my case. I have no violence in my priors that struck me out. I have no violence in prison. I still don't have any violence. I went to board on January 12th, and they told me 
that I continue to present an unreasonable risk to public safety because I received, received a retaliatory discipl disciplinary action in 2021, which is almost three and a half years ago, for refusing housing because I expressed my concern that I didn't want to be housed with an inmate who was troubled. So they punished me for it. And then the board used it against me to say that I pose an unreasonable risk to public safety and I can't be released. So and you're, cons you're, concern you're concerned about being housed against your classification or against what you feel comfortable with. And, and I've been in that situation where they put you with anybody unless you put up a fight. And when you put up a fight with the grievances, they retaliate on you. So there right. was a, there was a, there was a, what's happened to me. What was the name of the prison gang run by the officers? Greenwall. They have a, a the, uh, CDCR officers have a gang called Greenwall in Corcoran. And they completely retaliated against me for confidential information in my file that was bogus. They've given me disciplinary reports. And it was all in retaliation because I lit litigated. And my litigation history is online. Anybody could research it to find out the lawsuits that I filed on them. In fact, change.org, there was a petition on change.org that received 54,000 views, reviews, and people expressing their concern regarding the retaliation that I was experiencing at that prison. Right. So we want to have everybody leave comments. Check out all the links in the descriptions. Um, we're gonna ha we're gonna come back and circle back with you. Um, I think we have another another few minutes. If you want to come back on now, we can add some more to this. Um, are you able to get back on? Sure, absolutely. Yes. So these things are very limited. So for my audience, he got over fifty years for nonviolent crimes. I got fifteen for nonviolent crimes. This has to stop somewhere. Eighty thousand dollars a year for what? The man was 27 years old when he went in. He admits he made some mistakes. What more? I mean, but because he's a jailhouse lawyer helping himself and helping other people like I was, we get retaliated on viciously, especially if you're exposing corruption or uh, malfeasance. So now he's got these fake write-ups that are in his file, confidential file, that he knows are there, and they rely on his fake information from these officers that openly expressed that they're a prison gang and they've been profiled on some other uh, national television shows that this does exist in California. So Com completely, completely unreliable and uncorroborated information in my confidential section. And it's been exposed to me that the information that was in there was not corroborated or reliable. And there are regulations that tell these people, these prison officials, that when you rely on confidential information, there are certain procedures you have to abide by in order for something to be deemed confidential and put in your file. Right. And these people are not complying with that. Right. Yeah. And they, and they never do. I've, I've been in three different states everywhere. There's retaliation when you start helping people or helping yourself. Um, yes. They don't want to do their jobs. And recidivism is job security for a lot of these people who can't get a job anywhere else. So we're going to wrap this one up. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. We want you to leave a comment. Thank you. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share the story far and wide, especially in California. Bring us more stories like his, especially if you're out of San Diego County, because we're getting ready to do a gigantic expose about what's going on with this missing money, um, allegedly missing money, and why these cases are not being adequately reviewed. He, uh, my guest falls squarely into the reason the law was designed to resentence people that should not have been sentenced under those laws. So we'd like to jo uh, join, uh, join you here again in a few minutes. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for watching the show. Please leave a comment. Thank you. Right. Thank you. You can, you can dial back.